we are in a new content creator space and i don't know man it seems like artists are being disrespected these days like people don't really respect music and i want to talk about why mm. they don't really care about artists or respect artists quite the same mm. straighten right? up my chair a little bit yeah you know yeah saying? you know get, get, get yourself together get, tense. get yourself together <laughs> here's the context that we're gonna start with right rice gum okay right influencer star rapping right hannibal burris for y'all who don't know great comedian uh yeah great comedian great writer great writer mm -hmm. starting to be a rapper he's pursuing it in the most respectful way i've seen right but one starting to be a rapper and like retired from doing comedy just to rap Bo Burnham, another comedian, mm -hmm. starts dropping music, right? Look at some of these random influencers who never even wanted to do music that were getting signed to then do music, right? Yep, yep. Everybody's dropping in the song bag. People are getting, people are like looking at music as a lick. Let's yeah, look at that 100%. Way. Even if it's only for views, right? On the other side, what other categories do you see getting taken advantage of to that extent? It's not to the same degree, but I would say now, probably like boxing and fighting. Every influencer is trying to box All and right. fight. Yeah. Not to the same degree. Not to the same degree. Boxing though. and fight. That's actually a good, a great example, actually. Yeah. Um, because like you said, it's not to the same degree, but people are doing it who don't fit that tradition. Mm -hmm. Right? In the same way, you could argue that comedy might be you know yeah you know people yeah. are think they're funny yeah right? everybody's dropping some videos that are some type of funny and then stand-up comedians specifically i right, feel like they're being taken advantage of right so i don't think there's almost any content creator creative space that's not experiencing some level of people from the outside just taking it lightly and trying to create content on it but it seems like on a high level, the music music is being exploited differently. Why? Because there's more infrastructural or support uh, support of it. I think in some ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Think about Bad Baby. Yeah. Being signed to Atlantic. All right. Yeah, she came into the machine. She came into the machine. The sh machine truly support and said that we're gonna do this and. I mean, there's, there's other examples like that. Um, like you have somebody like DDG who took it seriously, mm -hmm. right? So that's fine. Probably did the best out of all of them, I would argue. I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, him and Queen Niger. Queen Niger was an influencer first? Yeah. I know that. Yeah, bro. Queen Niger was um, on YouTube and she was in a relationship with uh, some guy. Well, I guess maybe it's, she might. Her, her first son, I don't know how many kids she has, but I know she has a she had a son with that one um guy. And then they broke up. That became a whole thing. So they had a couples page. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. She used to sing covers and stuff too on YouTube. She was one of those people. And then yeah, they broke up and then now she got some other guy. Um, in some ways it gives me similar vibes. Just she got a type ish. But <laughs> <laughs> but they um but yeah, she came from that way. And she's like, you look at her, her and think artist first. You don't even think YouTuber or anything yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So she did it seriously. But again, most people are violating. Let's look at the, the meme pages. All right. And this is why I think music is getting exploited on a different level and it's more disrespectful. Because as an artist, you see that some random meme song goes up and a record label said, oh, snap, we want to sign them or we want to at least sign that song and we want to exploit that song. Now, the record label, you get it because they're just trying to make money short term and they know these windows come and they don't expect the song to be serious. And their their business model is set up in a way that that doesn't necessarily hurt them. At yeah. least not short term. Maybe there's an argument that long term you're ruining the industry and it'll slowly collapse because you signed this meme song or this <laughs> random one off. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there's that. But on a short term basis, for sure, 
It's like, oh yeah, we just capped. We made a good year. That was an extra million in the bank to report to our shareholders or whatever, mm -hmm. right? But the, and the artists are like, well, dang, that's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> like some Her? Around, him, him, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I don't know. I think that's going to be. That is something that I know. I've seen a lot of artists. Um, they hate it, bro. They hate it. They hate it. They hate uh, it. Yeah, I just gotta say, it. they hate it. They don't like it. They're not <laughs> fucking with it. But, <laughs> but why is it so easy to do it with music? I think, I think music. I should probably say this. I think music probably has one of the lowest barrier of, of entries with a lot of the creative. Like think about it, it's like lower barrier entry entry compared to like other things. You want to paint and do certain things. Like you gotta you have to own the equipment. You yes. know what I'm you gotta you gotta buy the supplies. There's not as high of a demand for it. Like you could decide today I want to be a painter. Doesn't mean that tomorrow there'll be people gonna buy your painting. You could decide today that I want to be a music artist. You go drop this shit in a Reddit thread. Like you might get eight people that listen to it, right? Eight people that could potentially grow into consumers or or yeah. fans or whatever. So I think like one is just that. I think a lot of them see it as like a very low barrier to entry, especially especially from an influencer standpoint. Because what do we always say? The hardest part about being an artist is learning how to get attention. As an influencer, you've already mastered that part of mm -hmm. the game. So now your hurdle is, can I make, let's say, the best of quality song at the least a listenable song, right? Which I've said it before on other episodes, I don't think that's as hard as a lot of people like to make it out to be, right? Like you have the influence and the money, right? You can put yourself in the room with certain people. You can put yourself in, you know what I'm saying? Get yourself in certain situations with producers and writers and things like that. It might not make you amazing, but it might make you listenable too, right? And listenable yeah. too is enough to get things moving for a lot of people, especially yeah. after we just talked about the whole fan experience thing. If a influencer I like drops a song, I'm going to listen to it, not because I think they're amazing, Easy. but because I like this influencer, right? So he could have dropped, he or she could have dropped damn near anything and I would want to check it out. They just chose the phone that attention to music. So I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons to it. Like they see it as like a very easy attention flip, which it is. It's like the, like I said, biggest barrier entry is getting attention. Hey, I already have 100,000 followers here or a million followers here. If I can just direct those people to Spotify, doing something I already know how to do because I already know how to make great content, right? Most of them are, are really good content creators. I already know mm -hmm. how to speak to my audience and engage them and make them excited about things I can do. The hardest part of this is now me just making the song. That's nothing, bro. That's a that's a, that's a couple hours on Google and some phone calls and you in the <laughs> studio session, bro, making some shit. See, I think a part of that, like you said, you don't even have to be amazing is mm -hmm. your song can be good, for the people while it's still bad. Yeah. Like the, have you seen the period odd girl on TikTok? Period odd? You didn't say period. Oh, period odd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl, bro. That shit, that shit was so terrible. So bad. And I don't even like calling music bad, but that shit was bad. Hey. So bad it flipped her into fame, bro. It's crazy. Exactly. We get one, we get at least one of those a year. Like some of the internet jokes somebody Easy. into stardom like at least once a year. Easy, right? <laughs> so when it can be that, right? It's not even necessarily a good song. And people almost know that it's not a good song, but it still connects in some way. Mm -hmm. Like think about being younger, like when the hood rap in Atlanta was like big. Yeah. Right. I'm not, not when the hood, hood rap was big. I'm just, what am I trying to say? Like when hood rap was less sophisticated, right? Like pro tools and all this stuff that wasn't as figured out. Like now where most of the like known hood rap actually sounds good. Mm -hmm. Right, like in terms of the audio quality, yeah. We listened to the shit that we were listening to. That shit was horrible. Yeah, but was making no computer mics and shit. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So going back and listening to that, it was like, dang. But it still hit. It's still connected, mm -hmm. right? So you don't. And some of these people might only have one hit back then or whatever. They weren't the most sophisticated lyricists, like songwriters, whatever, whatever. But it's still connected because it was real based off of what you understood where you came from right so you take that and then you put that out to basically the rest of the world everybody has maybe one song in them yeah all right yeah it's Just true and all it takes is one speaking that experience <laughs> and letting everybody relate whether it's funny right like or some true go hard but i think obviously the ones that tend to go up are those ones that you know some level of funny Right or some level of 
re relatability, flex. I think the perfect combination of could easily could have been a bad song, but it's actually a great song, which is why the moment I heard it, I said, this shit is a hit. Glorilla. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. What's the official name of the song? I'm so bad at song names. FNF. FNF, right? No, I'm saying. Oh, okay. Now I remember what to say. Yeah. Okay. Cool. FNF. Easy, right? It's it's funny. Mm -hmm. There's a level of flex in it. Some relatability. The relatability, Some... and it's the type of stuff that somebody would just say anyway, mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of people who can do that, all right? They might not put it together. The production might not be as good, but it's a lot of people who can do that and connect because the space that it's coming from all together is just like it's a real authentic space mm -hmm. right so i think that's what makes it so easy for other people to catch on to the space and at least catch one you don't really get challenged unless there's a whole album needed yeah right and you know you got to create yeah. another song you yeah. got to create another song yeah. that's something different but a lot of fake people don't even want that from outside the space it's like oh i just want to create one song for fun Right, just because for the experience, and a lot of them you talked about Spotify, they don't even want to monetize it necessarily. They don't care about monetizing it as much. Yeah, like it's just more almost like for marketing or just to have a video that went viral, and then shoot as a label. Especially, it's like, well, shoot, they don't even want to truly lock down on these percentages and stuff like that. They don't yeah. care the same, so I might as well take uh, the lion's share of this particular track and let them have their fun. Let them have their fun. <laughs> Let them have their fun while I sit back in the house and count the money. Yeah, cause that to me is one of the bigger parts of it too, where it's like every, I feel like I've heard other people say this too, but it's like every other creative profession, it always feels like deep down they want to be a music artist, right? Mm -hmm. Like athletes, actors. Yeah, definitely the athletes. You know what I'm saying? Now we see the influences. Like they all kind of have like that dream in there. Like, man, what would it be like to be a big rapper or a big mm -hmm. pop star or whatever? And so I think a lot of them just do it just because I, I think of an influencer mentality. Like if you're a big enough influencer and you've tried en enough products and things with your audience, like you got probably got in your head, like there's nothing I can't sell. You know what I'm saying? Like if Mr. Beast wanted to drop an album today, that should probably be top 10. You know what I'm saying? Cause, Cause of who he is. Right. Easy. I hope he don't do that. But you know, if he did, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so you, you know, you think about the influence, you selling t-shirts, you selling shows, you selling, Chicken nuggets, like random shit. And then you get to music and nothing and you're just going to tell you you can't sell music. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've sold all these other things that are much harder to get yeah. created and packaged and produced than a song is. So why wouldn't I take that leap? Um, and then, you know, music can have a, a crazy return on investment if the right things spark off. You know, like you could record a thousand dollar song and that shit blow up and makes you millions, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think there's a a level of potential return on investment that these influencers see in music that they don't they don't see with their other creative avenues. Like it doesn't because like, like I said, like a painting, it's hard for like a painting to go viral. Right? Like yeah. it's hard for like a um, it's hard for like a stand up comedy clip to go viral and have the same impact because the clip might just lead to ticket sales. It's still something hard you gotta have set up. Maybe if you're selling like digital products or whatever, but it's like but music is like the attention is gonna shoot off to thirty different streaming platforms. I'm, I'm getting paid from all of them. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make me look cool to my audience, right? Because they're like, oh, now such and such is rapping. So they're gonna buy in deeper into my brand narrative and my story and even mm -hmm. the other things I have going on. And then, like you said, it's like if this shit work out, I might have a legitimate career. If it don't work out, I can always be like, well, that was fun. Now back to the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Just keep it back pushing wherever I was at before. Bruh. Do you remember Kim Kardashian dropping a song? Yes. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free, but the thing is, we're not gonna let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com, check it out. Back to the video. Do you remember Paris Hilton dropping a song? Yes, I remember all of them doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird time, like, a very, very weird time. Very weird time. 
why are these people doing that, right? Like, why are they dropping music and not more comedy, right? More act, legitimate acting. And we know that a lot of people have tried at acting, right? That some actors feel like shouldn't have. And some of them feel like, oh, they've taken some of our spots because they already have some celebrity. We know mm -hmm. that's a real feeling in that space as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But the lasting value is different, I feel like, because of one major thing. You can do it in the dark. You can create music in the dark. Mm. All right, I'm in this room. I create. I can mess up a whole bunch of times. I can have a producer work magic, literally. <laughs> right? Mix engineer work magic, literally master this thing. And then it gets presented to the world. But to do acting at scale, I got to get good at this. Yeah. And even if I do it badly because I got into a room that you know, I normally wouldn't have based off of the talent where it is, but you know, my name, the money, connections, whatever. But still the audience looks at it and they're like, that's bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then you can't really keep doing it. You can't ever get looking like looked at as truly serious. So it's just a different path and it's a different type of labor that comes with a lot of these other routes that I don't think music has music doesn't come with and definitely doesn't have the same level as potential embarrassment because you can at least give it your approval before it goes out. Yeah, and I mean, you said something too. Um, I think is one of the bigger things with it is like the the perceived amount of talent you have to have to be successful in the thing. Like in acting, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are bad actors out there. They probably don't get far, but they exist, right? Yeah. Um, but like you, you don't have the potential to make it to a, being a top tier actress or actor without being like a pretty high level actor, saying I feel like with comedy, right? Like comedy, you're not hitting the big stages until you perfected comedy at a certain level. Music is one of the only artistic skill sets where you legitimately could make your very first song today and have an audience in the next couple of months. So you haven't perfected it yet. You haven't gotten, mm -hmm. you know, let's say just like quote unquote good at it yet, right? Like you may be bad to some people because it's such a preference thing. And it, like I was saying earlier, like the internet jokes, one terrible artist into stardom every at least one a year every yeah. year it's at least one yeah. and so it's like that could be you and the only difference between you influencer or celebrity with bad music and random artists with bad music is you already got an audience there's already people who are gonna listen to it anyway just because you on it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you put it out so you have a little bit of an advantage in the head start that might kick off all the other things that are used to convince us like this is actually good you know what i'm saying you know what my example of all examples that i fall back on uh oh who what Yes. I'm gonna give you one guess. I don't wanna guess and say too many, you know what I'm saying? Names. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I can already tell you going the like, wrong direction. I was like, yeah, bro, like, I don't know where you about to take this. I can already tell you go the wrong direction. Cause this is an easy one that you wouldn't feel that way about. Rebecca Black Friday. Oh yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent. Bad song. Everybody joked about it being bad. And it was so bad that in some way it was an earworm and good yeah. and you can't forget it. And now everybody knows who she is. Yeah, right? I wouldn't. I would not have said that. Yeah, so I had at least three other I, songs. I, 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 saw, I was like, my... Nah, let me hurry up and slide in, slide in the bass before he <laughs> put, put something out there. So, but it's a perfect example. Right? Yeah, like yeah. You, you cannot beat that. It's so easily and specifically bad that it made people talk about it. Right. That's what. That's the other struggle. Um, well, I'll get into that in a second. But like, so people talked about it. And they talked about it so much that they shared it. Oh, you got to hear how bad this shit is, dog. Yeah. Share it. But dang, it's catchy. And now uh, it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> you got that junk going in your head. Or now you're singing it almost in making fun of her. But still, you're still sharing it at yeah. the same time. And that loop <laughs> exists. And then it became a thing. I remember when she dropped the song a few years later that she was actually kind of good. It's like, oh, she actually can sing a little bit or she's not all that bad. Like that became a story for her <laughs> second song just because her first song was so bad. That's, it's, That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> we talked about this last episode. They like, if, <laughs> if you fail big enough, it's hard to lose. Yeah. Because you can flip it whatever way you want to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that to me is the disrespectful part with the influencer thing is like, the, the perceived amount of talent you have to have because like either they come into it thinking like hey I am good at this thing right. and I have a passion for it or they come into it thinking like 
man, all this other shit trash, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot more lean towards the right. Because, you know, you have, like I said, you have the outliers like the DDGs and like the Paul Brothers and things who could, you know, put out. Well, I like DDG, so I think his music is great. But the rest of Paul Brothers' music was good. I didn't actually have not listened to the I Paul don't Brothers. remember. Just so, by default, I was like, yeah, I'm not really interested yeah. in checking it out. I'm going to assume no. I just remember them being the headline because one of them paid for like a Gucci verse or something. And then, or tried to put out like Gucci was fucking with him. And Gucci was like, nah, they paid me for that shit. It became like a whole thing. And I was like, man, the biggest narrative here is that they could afford a Gucci feature. Because they was like, I mean, they were big at the time. They weren't like right. nowhere near where they are today, right? Um, but yeah, like it's like because we've worked with influencers that wanted to be artists, and like there are some of them. I'm like, okay, your music is good. You probably really do care about this thing. Like people are allowed to have other creative interests outside of whatever their main thing is. So, yeah. but I think that accounts for like maybe max fifteen percent. I think the other eighty five percent is like, oh, that shit looks easy, so I'm gonna get in that shit. Especially rap, bro. Every everybody thinks they can rap. Everybody <laughs> thinks they can rap. Everybody, bro. Oh, you're just saying words. <laughs> There, and I guess a key word too you said is creative, right? Mm-hmm. Most creatives don't see a limit to what they can do yeah. creatively. Yeah, they think they can do everything. They think they can do everything. <laughs> and oftentimes don't necessarily respect <laughs> the other craft yeah. as it should be. Because, shoot, we've seen some bad celebrity music, mm-hmm. right? Um, what's his name? Lamorne? Laverne, Lakeith? it's not Laverne, it's Lakeith? Like Laverne. Yeah, Lakeith. Yeah, Lakeith. Mm. My guy. I that tell music. that brother to hit us up. Well, I think, yeah. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> I tell that brother to hit us up. Hey, man. I, no, don't hit me up, bro. <laughs> don't hit me up. I would love, hey, I, I respect your, your craft, and, you know, art wise and everything. Only reason I say, I would love to work with you, but I, don't hit me up because I'm not a producer. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. I just don't yeah. have the talent to make you better. Right, that's just really not my thing. But you want to be marketed, like you, you have a great creative mind. I'm sure you have really cool concepts. That that that's my sauce. That's my juice. But yeah, do not hit me up until it sounds good. I can't even play that game, right? And that's, and that's me respecting the craft of a producer. Right? <laughs> like, who else dropped some? Uh, I feel like it was one other person that it was so bad. And I respect him so much that I don't mind commenting on how much of bad it was. But didn't like Michael B. Jordan drop a song or something? I don't know. I don't know either. They don't quote me on that. I don't know. <laughs> let's, let's, I'm, I'm gonna try to Google real. It quick. feels right though. Like it feels like something he would have done. Let me see. Michael <laughs> mm, Jordan. Oh, song? um, The Rock dropped a song recently. Yes, The Rock. The Rock. That's what it was. Yes. <sighs> see. <laughs> The Rock's music, though, I would not put on the level of Lakeith because it was good trash. And what I mean, it was good, theme trash. It was trash with a with a clear message. With a clear message, <laughs> reasoning, and a target, a clear target, a target demographic. demographic. Yeah. It, it was like I understand what this is. Yeah, it's like corporate, so it's, it's so it's supposed to be, not necessarily be great. Yeah, that's what it felt like—a corporate thing, you know. And like, oh, this is one of them cheesy songs in a commercial or something like that, yeah. right? And yeah. you don't get hold with the same weight to it. Or it was like the the theme song to a kid show. Now you know some kids shows will have some great theme songs, yeah. but then there's also a lot of them that aren't necessarily all that hot, and it's just cool. You don't really judge it that way. That's how I look at what The Rock did, because you can't even like The Rock's image. It'd be hard for him to have a good song that's that allows his image to be the image that it needs to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like so, so that's different, right? But it does go back to the theme, right? Of what actually gets attention and. When people get upset, oh, why is this bad music getting attention? Well, remarkability, right? Always going back to that theme, the word remarkable, what does it mean? Worth remarking about, right? Someone's going to tell somebody else about it. So good music, eh, like, I don't know. I might hear a good song, but I might not necessarily share um, that song. Mid music? Not necessarily so, all right? Mid music is almost good music these days, mm-hmm. right? Great, all right, we're getting better. Excellent, off the chain, however you want to say it. That's the stuff that gets shared a lot of times, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, wow, you bro, you got to hear this song, you heard this song. Then on the other side of the spectrum, realistically, most trash does not get shared. Yeah, right. 
it really doesn't. So right. sometimes it feels like that, but most trash does not get shared. We're talking about without somebody having a platform or anything like that. The things that go viral is the trash word for marking about. Like, bro, this is so bad in the right way that is I got to share this jump. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I got like Rebecca Black Friday, right? It was perfect. And it I don't even, I don't, it's almost good enough, right? And it's it's playing with that line where I got to share it. Because if it was like horrible and I can't listen to it, no one's going to even, you're not going to even play it or share it, right? You don't want nobody to know you listen to it. Yeah, exactly. You don't <laughs> want nobody, well, that's a whole nother thing, yeah, right? <laughs> right? Like, like, just say poorly mixed music. That's the best way to say trash without even necessarily having to get into a, the subjective idea. It's like, this is hard to literally listen to. Yeah. No one's really talking about that stuff, right? Only reason you would talk about that is if somebody who recorded it was somebody worth talking about, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, the rock song was like, just what? What is this, bro? So now you go share it and talk about it. But most bad music doesn't get talk, um, talked about. So it's like either the top of what I call good music mountain, right, <laughs> or the top of the trash can. Those are the things, right, that get the attention. Everything below that. I don't know, man. So I get it. Your music might be good, but it's so much good music out here. All right. The the new way, the only the best way to make good music go viral <laughs> these days is almost like a bad way by somehow getting it branded as mid. Because people love to talk about how mid music is these days. Yeah. So if you can <laughs> if you can catch that, it's like we're not even saying it's trash. It's like it's just nothing mm-hmm. special. So if you can if, I mean nobody really wants their music to be branded that way. But that is the way that good music does get talked about these days. Yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, because good bad music stands out. Good, oh, regular good music does not stand out. It, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stand out, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you just gotta understand human psychology, man. Like, what, what do, you, what do you, you, when you think about what you spend your time on, what you tell people about, what you share because it was funny, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, what does it come down to? What does it come down to? What you literally do? How much good music have you kept to yourself because it was just like good, right? But of course, the great music we know, we try to share that as much as possible. So, like that, <laughs> it, it's, it's such a complicated conversation that I feel like people don't really give much attention to in terms of what artists are going through today, in terms of the disrespect the genre is getting. But I think. On the flip side, artists need to take advantage of it. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, like hundred yeah, percent. Y'all are doing, y'all are missing the opportunity to take as much advantage of these other routes of creativity and monetization that others aren't. Right. So I have a a thought process. So you you're aware how like the black community is always like buy black, buy black, right? Mm-hmm. And we need to support our own. And have you ever heard any conversations where people are like, you need to build it almost only for black people? Yeah. It's like, this is ours, our own, and we don't serve anybody else that like that type of thing. And for me, you got to look at it holistically, right? It's just basic economics. If we only circulate within us at some point, right, there's diminishment that happens all right things diminish because we don't have any new money coming in especially if others are taken from our community mm-hmm. all right so it's a barbell there's two sides of it one economically yes we have our own and we maximize how much we circulate within our community great and do for ourselves but you can't be mad at these other people who are not building specifically for black what you want to really track is what they do after they get the money yeah. All right. So let them get everybody. Like, I, other uh, everybody else is getting everybody else money. Let us go get everybody else money, and then bring it back to the community. Then we have those people who just want to stay within, but you, we need to have the full spectrum for the pot to grow. Otherwise, if we're just circulating within us, it doesn't move. Right? It doesn't grow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So makes sense. That's the whole way I look at it. And in that example, artists are the black people. Right. <laughs> Artist, all right, cool. Do your artist stuff, your monetization stuff, but you gotta expand, all right, into these other categories. Yeah, so many Take bags. that money 
and then apply it back to funding your music career. Apply it back to whatever your lifestyle and maintenance is as an artist so you can continue to pursue your dream. Otherwise, if other people are taking from the community, right, while you're staying in your community, your pot is only getting smaller while there's growth. So that's the game. You got to have both. A great example is the, this dude named Trevor Jackson. I think that's his name. It's, it's confusing because there's a white one and a black one. But the guy who's on, not groupish, grownish. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He talks about like doing acting pretty much really just to fund his music. And he has a respectable music career. By the way, let me see how many Spotify followers he has real quick. Or uh, monthly listeners. Real, real quick. All right, so he has 303,000 monthly listeners. All right? That's a very oh, respectable yeah, That's number. crazy. Oh, yeah, he had a viral moment on TikTok recently, too. Oh, yeah, because he did a remix of... Um, Some song, yeah. Uh, whose song was that? Did he... Oh, oh, the Poland. Poland. Yeah, Poland. Yeah, Poland. Yeah, Poland. Yeah, bro. Y'all again, bro. Up. Our king is back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our king is back. <laughs> Hey, the king, man. You won me over. You might win me over. <laughs> you got me for the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trevor Jackson, though, yeah, he had 303 monthly listeners, and he's funding his music career, right, mm -hmm. as an actor. Mm -hmm. Built the brand as an actor. Built the brand, made that connection. In the same way Will Smith went from music to acting, that you can go from acting to music, right? I think the problem that you don't see a lot of people – you don't see the reason you don't see a lot of people do it is because music's so much harder, I think, to monetize than yeah. acting. The fans are more right? segmented, no right. infrastructure, real infrastructure yeah. unless you get to the top. I, I don't want to start no arguments, <laughs> actors, and you know, you like feel free to school me a little bit, but I'm, I'm making a blanket statement. I get it, but let's look at it this way you can get an acting job and make a, a decent amount of money even when you're not like a big known name, right? There's like levels to make money on the way up. Yeah. Artists is very hard it's to make much at all, like anything, if you don't really have a name. Like it doesn't have to be the biggest name, but it's, all, it's almost like the chasm is like zero to 60, right? Then, you know, 70, 80, 100, where acting and many other um, careers have like, a 10, Zero, 20. 10, 20. Yeah. Like they have a, a path to make money on the way up. So if you're already big and you're making money and then you have the way the music industry works, it's just like, why do I even want to put my energy into that? Maybe I just might make some for fun. That's the big one. Yeah, but like, why yeah, do that's... I want to like do this and, and go that route? Yeah. Like, they get in that shit and be like, oh, this what y'all doing over here? Yeah. Oh no, let me go back. Let me like, <laughs> go back to where I came from. Make it too hard to make the money. Like it's, it's just too much, right? So I, I definitely think that's a part of it. But artists, uh, th there's so many ways, right? So much money in these other fields and spaces and places, even within music, right? To focus on sync deals, right? Mm -hmm. Versus just building your fan base that one specific way. There's so many ways, man. Um, like, we, of course, we got the stories of, ah, dang, your name's not coming to me right now, bro. My bad. Oh, Cash Mace. Cash Mace getting his 100K plus writing a song for Spanx, mm -hmm. right? DMing the CEO, first of all, which shout out to Sarah Blakely. I think she exited for probably like more than more than five billion, I'm pretty sure, selling Spanx, <laughs> right? Um, and then who else did something like that? There was somebody else who wrote a sync deal that I know for some serious money. Yeah, I know Vince talked a lot about uh he got more money, I think he said from the GTA placement of his music than he's gotten from a lot of his music industry stuff. Hey, who said that? Vince Staples. See, he was in the last GTA. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. So there's so many other ways that you can look to to make the music work. At least do that, right? At least do that. Do both. Do both for sure. <laughs> like, like no. Every artist that's winning big is doing both. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, yeah, we know that Jay Z, Beyonce, and you know those usual actors for sure have money and. And their their music can do whatever. They got real fans. But hey, Rihanna is in this new movie, right? 
what what movie is that? Don't even, don't even make it's me. It's that slow song yeah. that that came out, and don't. they say she's gonna drop another one coming up soon. Yeah, don't do it to me. But yeah, know. like that's the same deal, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Everybody is gonna you get that extra cash. Yeah. It doesn't make sense not to. Right. It's just artists. Many of y'all, y'all might not. Y'all might not find that level of success and find even more money just going straight to the other route. Yeah, it's like right. sometimes the music is just an entry point to the thing that's going to really make you a lot of money, you know. And I think while well, we see it with bigger artists have gotten the opportunity to go through enough stuff that they realize that smaller artists haven't gotten to go through it yet, so they don't believe that until they get into it. They're like, damn, y'all weren't lying. This shit is not what I thought it was. Mm-hmm. Let me go sell socks. And it's like, yeah, bro, you've been selling socks from the jump. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Call that black seller, bro. I made a million off socks. I believe him. He said that? Yeah, he said in one of his songs. Some some running about. I made a million off socks. He did say that. Yeah, he did. Say, <laughs> I guess I just assumed that that was not socks he was talking about, and I just didn't know he was talking about. But maybe he was. You right. You might be right. Yeah, bro, I believe him. He probably did just straight up just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, man, the money is out there. It's so many ways to get it. Even we just literally this is the whole conversation because we just talked about the experiences. The experiences, right? There's so many ways to brand it. Look at yourself as brand a brand. Look at yourself as intellectual property and look to build intellectual property with your intellectual property because that's the thing that can, becomes easy to monetize. You can sell that itself. So then like, okay, now I don't own, like, let's just say Venture ATL, right? At one point I was like, well, sure, we could just sell a Venture ATL, the festival concept and name and then have nothing to do with it because we were going, to, we were targeting a very specific audience and how it was being built, right? That's yeah. the way I was seeing it. So, and build the clout and energy in that space. And just like, oh, it could be on cups, it could be on pencils, it could be on clothes, it could be in different experiences and spaces without me even having to do that work. But like yeah. how many, uh, they don't do, what's his name uh, anymore? Wood, 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 damn. Wood. What? Bro, the, the festival is an old ass festival, OG festival, a hippie dippy festival. What was it called? Burning, burning man? You talking nah, about burning? No. let's just say Burning Man. Dang, you almost came to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna find out there real quick. But um, I know Carlos Santana was there. Stockwood is that what it's called? Some wood, wood. Dang, whatever. Anyway. If Burning Man stopped having a festival, Burning Man as a brand could still move on, keep going. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? Like literally, people going to, are going to have t shirts, right? Yeah, that simple. All right, it's a thing that continue to be, can be sold. So we should have like a, a deeper conversation on intellectual property and ideas and and how that's going to be very very different in this content uh, space and era. But you know, we got to close out for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this clip, then you should watch the full episode of No Labels Necessary that it came from, and it's going to really blow your mind. Check this clip right here.